Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you, this episode is brought to you by our patrons, like Ahigo Comics, Qua, and Nestor Flores. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it would really help us out. Thanks for support, everybody. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is time to continue to talk about Star Wars Legion. So, full disclosure, at the front, I'm talking about future plans that aren't, like, actually set up yet, so this is what I'm projecting I'm doing, and I assume that it will go forward, but I don't know. But our pl my plan is that since I have already shot and scheduled another Legion video, which is the Jin preview, and that is already uploaded and set to go, I figured I'd go ahead and shoot this one real quick, and I would basically do a Legion double feature. So, presumably, if nothing has gone horribly wrong, and you haven't seen it already, also on this channel there's going to be a video talking about the Jin preview for way too long and talking about all the stuff with her. But we're here, and we're going to talk about Legion announcements, because, my god, it's not like Legion has enough products coming out. Uh, so two new operative expansions have been announced. Uh, at the same time, no need to worry about one faction having an operative for longer, no. Theoretically, hypothetically, at the same time, we should be getting Sabine Wren and... Bosk, who has just one name. Good old Bosky Bosk. Uh, let me double check if the, re the release dates are both... Nope, second quarter. We're both second quarter early up. Okay. Just double checking the times. So yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk about them today, and we're going to talk about some stuff with their designs. I will also say, first off, since it applies to both of them, I'll just get it out of the way here. Uh, we're looking at more customizable minis. They've uh, explicitly said, not only in the spreads can you see different designs, but they explicitly called it out. So it looks like uh, these operatives will have a couple of different arms, and in, in Sabine's case, heads. You can uh, model her with or without helmet, and uh, with either both pistols or the pistol and her dark saber. We'll talk about that later. And similar for Bosk, you can either model him uh, two guns aiming his mortar gun or uh, his mortar gun down and he's hefting his uh, spooky uki toxic charge, his dioxin charge, I think they call it, whatever. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Other than that, uh, not much else to say about the intro front. We'll go ahead and let that out. Yes, I'm going to record the X-Wing video. I'm working on it, but it's long and I got to do timely stuff. My Legion videos do better. Anyway, let's jump into Sabine. So, Miss Sabine Wren, an operative for Rebels. Uh, actually, hold on. This The slide's not going to help me because i got to zoom and enhance. Let me uh, dial in. Okay. So, looking at her, she's an operative, obviously, one unit. Uh, she looks like she's 125 points base, and we'll, uh, we'll get into that later as we talk a little bit about some of her stuff. But she has... Uh, for Rebels especially, a very interesting stat spread. She's only got 5 health and 2 courage, so she's a little a little squishier than some commanders who are cheaper than her. But remember, she's an operative. However, on the surge front, we're talking about uh, surge to crit and surge to block and speed 3, much like the FET. The big FET. And uh, also, if you look at her keywords, she's a lot like the FET. Um, I really should have vo vocalized this because uh, the forum was talking about possible Sabine lists in future, and I was like, I should, I know exactly what I think S S Sabine should be like, which is, she should probably be like Rebel Boba Fett, so she'd ha she should have Imperious and Jump, and, you know, th some of those more defensive options, she should have her fun toys, we'll talk about that in a little bit too, and uh, maybe because she's got two guns, she can have Gunslinger, like, huh, that could be cool, and uh, yeah, hey, so here's Sabine Wren, the unique operative with Jump 2, so she can take a move action and move Ignoring Heights. Uh, she's got Gunslinger, so she can double tap, shoot twice. Uh, very effective considering that her default, her, her only ranged weapon so far, uh, appears to be pistols. And, uh, she's got Impervious, which means you, uh, roll a additional number of dice while, uh, defending. Also, if I didn't mention it, uh, her defense dice is red, which is a huge departure of Rebels. So yeah, she's red with Surge. And, uh, she's got Nimble too, so Rebel Synergy, so she keeps her dodge tokens. So, at 125 points, I think Sabine is the tankiest rebel unit there is. She only has 5 health, sure, but she's got a red defense die with a surge conversion, she's got impervious to help resist those pierce, and she's got a nimble so she can still take uh, advantage of dodge tokens if you're stacking those bad boys up. So, uh, yeah, that's all there is, I think, to talk about her keywords. Uh, Gunslinger gives her a lot of potential, that's good, considering her mixed bag of attacks. Uh, her... Default melee is combat expertise, two black dice. That's okay. Her weapon, though, are her dual Westar 35 blaster pistols, which are range one to two. They have their three dice and have one of each type of dice, red, black, white, and is pierce one. So 
while she doesn't have sharpshooter like a lot of other commanders and operatives, a lot of unique singular hero units do, uh, she does have Pierce 1, and she's got a red die in there with a surge conversion, a black die with a surge conversion, so you're probably looking at one damage going through, at least, and she can attack twice, like Han. Uh, that's real freaking good, okay? So, just baseline, you're looking at a unit who can be mobile. She's got jump, so she can ignore terrain. She can get in close to guys to get in those two dice, can pow-pow. She's not as vulnerable to pierce, which is a very big deal. And if you stick her with other units, she does have a synergy. Uh, but let's, let's talk about the real level of Sabine, which is, uh, hey, so she's got a unique sidearm. Uh, for 25 points, so sidearms are not automatically free, guys, if you thought that from Jin and the Pathfinders. Uh, and she's got a Darksaber, or rather the Darksaber. It's a unique unit, which is also Sabine only. I don't know why, because she only has one sidearm slot, but maybe they're just, they're future-proofing. Uh, that's something that FFG has been a lot better at with Legion. Uh, and so, on its own, this is a... Uh, five black dice melee weapon with impact one and pierce one. So it's a uh, pocket Luke. It's not quite as good, but she does have still have her surge to crit conversion like Luke. And it does give her pierce one and um, impact one. So it gives her a little bit of anti-armor. Uh, plus with, with her surge to crit conversion and the impact and the pierce, uh, she can get up close and personal with some vehicles. That could probably be pretty nasty. And she also, when she has this, gains a couple of other keywords. The first is she gains uh, Dauntless, uh, which is the Rebel Pathfinder's bonus ability, the keyword, which is after you rally... Sorry, I'm, I'm leaning forward into my computer, so if my voice gets a little far away. After you rally, if you are suppressed but not panicked, you may gain one suppression token to perform a free move action. So um, even if she's suppressed but not panicked as of when she rallies, you can still get an extra move action for another suppression, which is dangerous. Though, um, when we talk about Bosk, he's got a training upgrade that I think will help with that. But it's got Dauntless, so it makes it makes her keep some of her mobility. And the Darksaber also reads uh, that when you are defending against a melee attack, you gain immunity pierce. So, or is that... Yeah, I think that says melee attack. Because it's it's two words. It's a murherher and then a terherher. In the, in the spread. So she gains immunity pierce while being melee attacked. And that's not as good as like a Luke or Vader. Uh, or even I think Palps is immunity pierce. But still, it means she can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some big name commanders like a Vader or a Luke. Have a similar like damage level. She doesn't need to worry as much about suppression. She's got her own impervious and she's immune to pierce. Um, and as people have noted that if she gets immunity to pierce with, ranged atta with melee attacks, that means her defense is really good against melee. Uh, and I think some people have said they might RRG to correct that. I don't know, because, well, maybe they will, because it's a timing thing, but still, it's it's very useful. Uh, so that's one that's one upgrade we can see clearly, and then she's got two gear upgrades, which I'm assuming are Sabine only, because they're hers, but uh, it's her personal shield and her little Electro Whip thing. I would have sworn these would be command cards, like Boba, uh, and actually now I'm a little upset that, like, that bo all of Boba Fett's command cards were, were his cool toys, and they didn't make them standalone upgrades, but whatever. So, no idea what those will do, though the Electro Whip thing looks like it has an action, and she does have an Immobilize token in her spread, so we should assume that she can Immobilize somebody for an action, or give them one Immobilize token anyway. And uh, Sabine's upgrades are obviously, she's got a sidearm, she's got two gear slots, and she's got a training slot. We can also see one of her command cards, her 3-pip Legacy of Mandalore, which is Sabine Wren and two troopers, uh, which is actually pretty shocking. And that is when uh, it means that Sabine gains Inspire 1, and while Sabine uh, does, uh, issues an order token to, I believe that's Commander, Operative, or Special Forces, uh, she gains either an Aim or a Dodge token. So that's pretty cool that as a Operative, she can actually issue orders to, to other troopers. Like, she can issue orders to people around her, which kind of makes sense because... Sabine's character in, in the show Rebels, which she's from, because you didn't know, she does kind of evolve over time. You know, when she starts, she's, I don't know, mid to late teens. She's, you know, ex-Imperial ex Academy, studied all about weapons, tech, and design and stuff. Uh, was obviously very gifted and intellectual, but she ran away because she didn't want to build weapons of war. 
and uh, eventually join the rebellion. But later she evolves to kind of come to terms with her heritage. And while she doesn't become like a, a super important leader, she does actually start organizing the Mandalorians to fight back against the Empire, which is a thing. Uh, and I'd love to I'd love to see some some heavy ass infantry, uh, Clan Ren, Mando, special forces, uh, rocking out who can join up with Sabine. I really could have figured Mando, Mandos could almost be their own faction at this point, but you know, there's a thing. And hey, they could have a, an Imperial parallel because there are Imperial uh, Super Commandos, which are Imperial Mandos, led by uh, Gar Saxon, who could uh, also be a guy with some fun tricks. But yeah, that's all we can see from Sabine, other than the fact that uh, naturally, since it's Sabine and she loves bombs, there is a small stack of her little bomblet tokens. And also her little starboard token, uh, which in the show, at least one she painted exploded. So I'm guessing that she's got a command card, maybe two command cards, which let her throw bombs around the field. Uh, so that's super fun, and I really actually like her. I like her design a lot. Um, if you are one of those players who like, oh, my rebels are too fragile. Like, obviously, much like with the actual Boba Fett, who you have to, you have to choose carefully when you choose to spring Boba on people, you know, and use all his toys. Uh, Sab- excuse me, Sabine will probably be the same, but uh, she's basically a pocket Luke operative, right? She's got oodles of defensive abilities. She's got great mobility. She doesn't have charge, but she does have jump, so she can hop over terrain pretty easily. And with that dark saber, she can bring a lot of hurt to normal units and even hurt um vehicles a little. I wouldn't like send her to wrestle with uh the the ATST or the occupier solo uh but as like a oh shit there's a heavy enemy unit bearing down on me i could totally squeak her in there uh, and god forbid you're playing a mirror match um for sure against ATRTs just yeah no fuck it go whole hog uh so that's sabine i think uh so uh let's go ahead and move on to the bosk man so if sabine is just kind of like what the rebel version of boba would be uh bosk Bosk's a, a different animal. I think he's he's pretty new. So Bosk, um, to me, it looks like he's 115 points. Some people are like, oh my god, he's 85 points. No, no, there's no way he's 85 points, guys. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. And we'll we'll see why in a second. Um, but basically, the way I look at it at Bosk is, hey, Imperial players, you've been seeing Wookiees, right? They're out and about. Have you have you ever wanted to do what they do, which is uh, completely rampage through terrain without any concern and occasionally get mad and punch people? Uh, Bosk's your guy. Okay, let's run down Bosk. So, assuming 115 points, you know, expensive but not as expensive as some units. He's got a white defense die and no surge. Mmm, very similar to Wookiees. Uh, he's got seven wounds on his own and two courage. He's speed two. Uh, he has the bounty keyword, obviously. Uh, oh, and, uh, so you may be wondering, oh, gee, why is his courage so low? And why is his defense stat so bad? Uh, ensnare, enrage three. I want to say ensnare, because it's blurry, but it's enrage three. So, that means that when you have three or more wounds, your courage becomes infinite, and you gain charge. Which is great, because, uh, like Wookiees, Bosk has expert climber and unhindered. So, uh, difficult terrain poses no problems, and he doesn't have to worry about, uh, you know, um, uh, climbing. Clambering, do not roll defense, die or suffer wounds. So, uh, first of all, that's great. He's basically like a Wookiee warrior squad as a one-man guy, just on his design. But also he has Boba Fett's uh, little bounty power, which means you can get extra victory points for killing units. Oh, and then uh, Bosk has a new, has a new, new keyword, which is super fun. Regenerate three. At the end of your activation, if you have, uh, or it's, it's uh, roll one white die, one white defense die for each wound you have, if up to three. If you roll a surge or a block, remove one wound token. So, uh, yeah, that seven health is going to, assuming he's not completely one shot, that seven health can actually go farther than you think. One third of the time, he's going to remove a wound. So, statistically speaking, if he's got three wounds, that means he's going to drop one of them every time. And sometimes maybe more. Now, obviously, with white defense dice, even though surge counts, you're not going to want to count on that. But it's very interesting that he's got that robust effect. Uh, also, there are healers now. You know, medical droids are in the game. And he does have a gear slot, so he could take emergency stims. Um, okay, that's all his keywords. We're talking about speed 2. He's got search to crit. He's got no defensive search, but search to crit. White ground. Okay. 
Let's talk about his weapons. So uh, his ranged weapon is his uh, Relby Mortar Rifle, which is ranged 2 to 4. It has one red die and four white dice. So it's got one uh, one damage is really likely, which is good because it has pierce one. And then it's got uh, four dice, which are all over the place. But it has suppressive. So it's a bit like the ATSC mortar, I think, in that regard, in that you know, you'll know you be taking long-range pot shots, laying out suppression. That's probably two suppression because it's a ranged attack with a very accurate die and probably one damage. Uh, good for keeping enemies back at a distance. It literally doesn't work at range, t- at range one, though. So, kind of iffy. Uh, it's going to be swingy. You're going to look at a... It's it's like if the Z6 and the DLT had a baby, right? Like, you're going to look... You're, with that Pierce 1, you're going to look at that one damage on that red die a lot of times. There's, you know, seven to eight chances with that surge conversion that that's going to land, and two of them are crits because it's surge to crit conversion. And you're always, no matter what you do, going to slap a, at least one extra suppression on them. And sometimes you'll roll good on those white dice, and you'll do, like, five damage. You know, swingy, variation. Uh, other times you'll just do the, your like one guaranteed, but still that's a that's a scary prospect to the fact that that's a two to four attack, right? Like he can hit and suppress your guys from a little bit f- then farther away than most you know, other units can engage. Oh yeah, and uh, his melee attack frenzy one red, two blacks, one white, pierce one. Uh, when he gets his inner rage going and he can charge, and the fact that he can charge over terrain and and, and stuff like that, uh, that sounds pretty scary at least for troopers, unlike. Luke or Vader, who have their big, scary, you know, Pierce and Impact melees with extra dice, um, or even, uh, what am I looking at? Uh, Sabine or Boba types, you know, tanky ones. Uh, and what is, who, who will resist some of that damage, right? Uh, not good against vehicles. Where's Chewie, actually? I want to look at Chewie's card fan. Yeah, okay. Um, also, so it's very similar to Chewie actually, to think about it. Oh, that's actually... I didn't even think about it that hard. That's actually interesting. Um, because Chewie is four red, and he has in range four, but he has nine, so he has two extra health. Uh, but he doesn't regenerate, unlike uh, Bosk. So yeah, so Bosk is similar to Chewie, but instead of guardianship and teamwork, he's got bounty and the ability to regen. And he doesn't have any impact. Uh... Oh, and he even have the same gear setup. I really should look, double check with Chewbacca. I was like, because there's a thing I'm going to talk about the training upgrade he has. I'm like, I don't think anybody else has double training. Oh, Chewie has double training upgrades. Wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about regular troopers. So yeah, he's a very similar setup to Chewbacca. His melee attack isn't as good as Chewie's, but he has Pierce One on that as well, uh, which means that's another almost assuredly one damage going through. And also he's got you know a couple of black dice in there and a white die that could be up to four. Not. It's not as scary as Chewie's raw damage potential, but much more consistent. Um, no amount of of like armor or well, armor might still apply. It depends, on that. but um, no amount of like cover, other shit like that is gonna keep you from. You roll those hits, you're gonna get those blows. And in fact, cover doesn't apply to melee attacks at all. So yeah, that would matter. So actually, now that I'm thinking about it, actually, I don't think considering that he's probably more expensive than Chewie, I don't think that he. His melee attack is necessarily more consistent. I don't know. I'd have to look at possible sources of defenses. I guess, well, no. A lot of Imperial units do have red defense dice. So with Chewie, you're probably looking at uh, potentially, you know, the ability that they just roll they just roll their blocks and Chewie does nothing. Frenzy is like, no, I'm going to get you at least once. Um, and... Rebels who tend to be squishier, that's even better, because that, that they're going to want those blocks more, and you're going to be like, no, Pierce. So uh, we can see that he has Hunter, which is good. That's very good for Bosk. And he has a new training card, Endurance, uh, which is at the, end of the active, at the end of the activation phase, remove, you, may remove, you may remove one suppression token for six points. Uh, so first of all, hope to God this comes in Sabine Rebel players. Because this is going to be a godsend on, well, on Sabine too, because she can she can get Dauntless with her Darksaber. But also on Jin and uh, Pathfinders. That's really great. Uh, for Bosk in particular, and also this combo does work for Chewie, since I remember that he does have two uh, training slots. Um, I would say this combos well with, with Duck and Cover, if you're concerned about getting Bosk into melee, right? Uh, you can Duck and Cover and then immediately... <laughs> slurp that uh, s- suppression token off. That combo, I think, only works for Chewie and Bosk, though, because they're the only ones with two training slots. Otherwise, I don't know. Um, endurance is probably good on a couple of other units 
who are worried about suppression, but it's training, so it's only certain commanders, operatives, special forces types, guys. And he has a gear slot, which is completely unknown, and we'll talk about some speculation on him in a second. But um, we can see one of Bosk's command cards, and Bosk is more like Boba Fett. And in fact, I bet you're going to see this a lot with Imperial, especially with these bounty hunter type operatives. Uh, his three pip lying in wait only applies to Bosk. And uh, Bosk gains Sharpshooter 1. After an enemy unit activates, Bosk gains one aim token. That's at no range, anyway, by the way. So, yeah, no. Uh, this is a holy shit Bosk ambush. Like, uh, Sharpshooter 1 and Pierce 1 with his gun, that's much more likely to get that guaranteed damage. Oh, and um, look at all those white dice he has. You know, aim tokens. Slurp them up and just roll those dice as many times as you need. He's got a gear slot. Heck, you could give him precise if you're going to use a lying in wait and get even more, you know, advantage out of it or reroll more dice. So, yeah, no, lying in wait is scary. That's an absolute actually lying in wait. And you're going to play mind games with your opponent um, because he has no idea what units you're going to activate besides Bosk, right? Because Bosk is the only with a face-up order. And depending on your unit comp, you can kind of control that a little bit because, you know, you flip over a token and it's like, oh, it's a corp core unit. I have five of those. I can pick which one of those guys to activate. Or, oh, I have three special forces units on the field, you know, because I've got a generic commander and I'm running him cheap and streamlined. I put all my points in Bosk of all people. So, yeah, that's that's pretty scary. Now, speculation. So, Bosk has what appears to be a single charge token. We know he has a dioxin charge, and presumably that is uh, that is a neurotoxin poison thing. Uh, presumably that's what all these weird, like, biohazard-type tokens are for. So, he's going to have some kind of freaky poison bomb effect. Now, the question is, is it his gear card, like Sabine? Or is it one of his command cards, because he only has one charge? So, yeah, I don't really know. Uh, I'm not going to begin to speculate on how exactly they're going to model poison. Uh, it's funny. I also recently on the forums was like, yeah, I don't think Legion, Legion doesn't have damage over time effects, but I I feel like they, A, missed the boat with all these flamethrowers they had in the first, you know, handful of units. And also, I don't know if I really like that idea in Legion, because, you know, units are usually pretty squishy. Um, well, they're here, so there are a lot of ways they could do it. Uh, hopefully they do it as, like, a, a die roll, like... Roll a white die or roll, roll hopefully a red, red die. If it comes up a blank, you take a wound at the end of your activation or something. Uh, that's probably going to be some serious area denial package. In general, I would say Bosk is all about area denial. You don't want to get too close to him because of his uncanny ability to move around terrain. And like I said, he has a very consistent melee attack, even if it's not high damaging. Uh, he's got a very consistent ranged attack, which hits you at 2 to 4. So, Beyond is basically your only safe range, and because he's got that Pierce 1 and that Suppressive, and he's got a red die in there, you're very likely to take a couple points of Suppression if he tags you. Uh, that could be your unit is just straight up Suppressed, right? From long range. And then Lion Wait, that's going to be, shit, how many units am I going to activate before Bosk? I don't want to move anybody close to him because he's going to have a buttload of aim tokens to throw on me. So Bosk is neat. I love his design space. And I love that, like I said, while it's... For, honestly, this is for both of these. While both Sabine and Bosk are very much clearly the Imperial or Rebel version of the other side's previous operative, they still have their unique twists. Like, um, Sabine's a little customizable. She's a little cheaper on her own, but you can equip some of her cool toys. And she's not necessarily restricted to just throwing them out once. Uh, and... While defensive, she still has synergy, like her command card actually issues orders to other people, uh, and looks like it's supposed to be to special forces uh, operatives or commanders, right? Like, sh she's she's about teamwork with your big guns, and she has an attack style very similar to Luke. She's got a jump, and she's got a, a you know, a, a, a Pierce Impact weapon, if you give her fully kitted. Uh, and, and so far, I, yeah, because Hama's was the only one who had Gunslinger before, so she's the second one. Uh, meanwhile, over in, like I said, Imperial Territory, while Bosk has a lot of keywords in comparison to uh, Chewie, and he's a little bit squishier, uh, he also has that regenerate, so he can actually, you know, he can actually come back a little bit with his health, which is always a concern because of how fragile those guys are in terms of actually taking hits. And he's got bounty like Boba, so he can play around with your victory points a little. Um, his damage potentials aren't as big, or actually, well... That's not entirely true because his uh, his mortar rifle has more dice, but they're of uh, they're of weak overall of weaker types than uh, Chewie's bowcaster. But he's got less pierce, so he's got 
he has a little bit more variation in his in his attacks, so he has a higher ceiling, but he also has that minimum floor because both his melee and his uh, range deck have pierce one. And like I said, he's got a lot of area control potential, whereas Chewie is usually because he's got like teamwork, he's got those command cards that help him out with buddies, he's got guardian. Chewie, you're probably usually going to stick close to another unit so he can kind of like bodyguard them and rampage into close quarters and smash some guys. And that's, uh, that's really all I have to say. We've got some interesting previews coming up for these guys, but that'll be way later because we've got, like, three other months of shit to get through. Um, like I said in the last Legion video, which also, like I said, should be up today, I hope you enjoyed the double feature. Um, next up, preview should hopefully be next week or maybe the week after is Pathfinders. We'll have some interesting things to talk about that. Then I'm expecting that it won't be until next month where we talk about Krennic and Death Troopers, which is going to be super hype for me because I love those guys. So swag. Um, and then after that, we've got the two heavies and then these two operatives, and then I'll, then I'll announce some more shit. But anyway, I'm good. Uh, Legion is, is really good. And like I said, I'm I'm glad we're starting to get a little bit of unit divergence. Like, even if, as I noted, Bosk has a similar role and setup to Chewie or Wiki Warriors, and Sabine has a similar setup to Boba, they are still distinct in, in how they operate and kind of like what their tricks are as operatives. It's pretty neat. I'm... I'm Looking forward to seeing that more. Um, also looking forward to see what they do more with poses and stuff. That's neato. Actually, I wonder how TDS is going to handle that. Are they going to have, like, you, you can, like, customize which, which mini, whatever. That's a different thing. Anyway, real fucking neato. And we'll talk about more of that stuff when that stuff comes out. Uh, I'll go ahead and end the episode here before it goes on too much longer. If you like this episode, give it a like. If you have any comments on these announcements, leave those in the comment section down below. Though, uh, if you're, you're going to yell about how you're mad at Sabine, I'm... I'm not gonna pay attention to your comment. Sorry. Uh, you can tell about how you can you can totally talk about how cool Bosk is, though. He's a cool guy. And of course, uh, if you're new here and haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Best way to keep track of our new videos. Also, hit the bell for notifications so you know when we post a new video. And maybe so you get alerts if I do things like double post videos. I don't know. Uh, also, that's important because uh, YouTube no longer automatically posts. Uh, our video uploads or publishings to social media, we have to do that manually, so there's going to be some, like, disconnect from between when stuff goes live to, like, when it gets tweeted about or something. So, you know, alerts are good. And, of course, like it says at the front of the show, you can support us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early, lots of other goodies, and it really helps us out. Um, also, keep an eye on the merch store. Uh, I think we can do cinch bags now, which, uh, to me, says dice bag. So let's see if we can put some logos on those. That'll be neato. Anyway. Uh, y you know, stay artistic, keep your dice rolling, and uh, just imagine that my outro here is uh, Hungry Like the Wolf, because there's no way I'm going to play that song. But, you know, I'm on the hunt, I'm after you.